three substances, right? These are three uh, types of, of resources that we have in the body. Chi, blood, and essences. Okay. What do you see in my, my characters might not be so neat, so let me just say it. You see that this and this are the same? Okay, so this is the character for a kernel of rice. This character is the, the wind and the clouds that move. So this, this is the character for chi. And this character you can translate to rice exploding and causing wind. Not like a fart. <laughs> uh, I would say it's like the closest thing we have to like ATP, right? So like you've digested a, a grain of rice and now you have this movement. So this is chi. This is a grain of rice and the color green. So this is about like the jade essence. So this is a stored essence. This isn't exploding and causing energy. This is something that's precious. And this is blood. So chi, shui, which is blood. And G, which are essences. Now, in your sheet, you see in the top left corner, and I'll do this in red because red's the color of the heart and fire and yang. You have this thing up here. This is Shen. This is spirit. Okay? So we all have spirit, but what we're going to talk about now is. That's okay is the substances of the body. Now, the, the Shen gets housed in the body, um, but we're not going to so much focus on that. I just wanted to acknowledge that that's a very important thing, that if something's going wrong in your life, sometimes it's because your spirit isn't rooted. And that's one of the things that we work to do in Chinese medicine acupuncture called Ben Shen, or rooting the spirit. So a lot of people who have pathologies of the body is because their spirit, you're, just not, you're not here, you're just somewhere else. And just, if you can root it, it's usually a good step in the direction of feeling more present. But now we're going to focus on chi, blood, and essences. Okay, and these make no sense to anybody because they're not part of our vocabulary. So one of the things I want to, I, I work with patients to do is explain them in a way that makes sense to people in modern society. And what is, if we're going to talk about resources, what's a resource that you use every day and you spend it? What? Money. Money. Yeah, money. Energy. You spend energy, but energy is going to be like a little more, a little bit more esoteric. We're talking about money because everybody has a relationship with money. You have some, you spend some, you save some. So we're going to call chi our day-to-day -day checking. We're going to call blood our short term savings. So, this is like save for your property taxes, save for a vacation, you save for a big appliance, save for a rainy day fund, but all the things you use for short term savings. And then, essences, we have two types of, of deeper savings. And you know this. What are the two types of long-term savings accounts you can have? Like a retirement. retirement account. Excellent. We'll say this is your retirement account. And then what's a deep level of savings that you have access to, but someone has to give you? A bond. Trust. A trust or an inheritance. Now, if someone gives you a big, fat inheritance, huge, a billion dollars. What? A billion. Someone gives you a billion dollars. A million sounds like, it used to be a lot of money, right? It'd be easy to spend a million dollars. You could like buy a house and go on a few vacations and before you know it, done. If someone gives you a billion dollars, you would have what? A lot of it. Really no worries about money. No. 
unless you're wildly frivolous. But it would be hard to spend a billion dollars. How many houses can you buy? I mean, like, how many boats? You still have money left. That is a very precious amount of money that's handed to you, that you really have no control over other than someone handed it to you. There's a type of essences that we have in Chinese medicine, they're called pre-heaven essences. This is basically your inheritance, the resources that your parents give you. If your parents are super healthy and they birth you when they're young, you're probably gonna be super healthy. If your parents were really sick when they lived their lives, where they smoked and they drank and they really, they lived hard, and then they had you you might have a tendency to have more vulnerability, more sensitivity. Now, that's not a guarantee, but in general, you can see, like, oh, if, if someone has a grandparent that lives into their 90s, what do you say about the person who you're talking to, your friend? You have good what? Genius. You have good genes, right? Hey, you got good genes. You likely are going to inherit some of those resources from your great-grandparent. They were able to live to their 90s. You might what? Be able to live to your 90s. Same thing, if you had a big fat inheritance, then we'll give you a billion dollars. So that means someone had a lot of money at the end of their life to give you a billion dollars. What's likely gonna happen at the end of your life? You're gonna still have a lot of money. That's your inheritance. So we're gonna call this pre-heaven. Essences. And your retirement is the stuff that you save for yourself. Post-heaven. Meaning, pre-heaven means like, you were in heaven, and then you, you came to earth, and all of a sudden, before you got here, someone had this big, wonderful thing for you to have. A lot of resources, give you a lot of resources. Post-heaven means you're done with the heaven time, you're on earth, and these are the things that you save for yourself. Okay. Short-term savings, we're gonna call our blood, sweat, and tears. We even have a phrase like that in English, right? If you put your blood, sweat, and tears into something, you put a lot of resource into it. Excellent. And this is your chi. This is your breath. Okay? Great. Now, if you're going to go out for dinner, do you want to pay for it from your retirement account? Why not? And you're realizing, no, you don't want to do that, right? Well, why not? Because you'll need that one. You'll need that one day, right? What day is that? <laughs> well, you know, right? the day that you can't work anymore, right? Or, God forbid, something really big comes up. Right? So, our day-to-day -day checking account is money that we just comes in, goes out, comes in, comes out. That's like our cheat. Okay, so, did you have a good night's sleep? Yes, I can do my work, I can exercise, and I kind of like do my thing with my cheat. Right? I live, I don't do big things with cheat because cheat is only for like, living day to day, right? She's not going to get you through your retirement. It's like taking a breath. How long can you hold your breath? Done. Maybe a few minutes. Okay. So she's on the level of breath, blood's on the level of blood, and, and flesh and substance. And she in essence is, we did the meditation, what was, what was the level of that? What were the two? Organs. Organs and bones. Organs, bones. These are deep, precious things in your body that if you break or disease your bones or your organs, it's a what? It's a big problem. Is it a little problem? Yeah, probably not. If you get a cold, you, get like, you, have a, you have a sniffle. Now, it could be in your organs, but it's likely not in your lungs. It might just be in your sinuses. Right? No problem. Yeah, a couple of days, no big deal. If you strain a muscle, okay. I'm not concerned about the longevity of my life if I tear a muscle. If I have an organ disease, you're concerned. If you have a bone break, you're going to the hospital. Okay? So that's like the level of severity of how precious these resources are. Now, the reason I use the, the example of the bank accounts is sometimes we pay for dinner out of our retirement account energetically. Right? Who here works and works through being tired or sick. Yeah. Work should be your chi. If you don't have chi and you're tired or sick, what's the resource that you're going to use to get through it? Your blood, your essences. Which is why it fatigues you more, and you feel like, ugh, you feel more frustrated about doing it, because you literally don't have the resources that you should use to do that work. 
it's very appropriate to go to work and do your work out of your chi. No problem, I can work. And if you're healthy and you have good chi, hey, I can work, even if it's a tough day, no big deal. Your blood, you wanna put into things, right? Like, if you're gonna put your blood, sweat, and tears into something, if you're gonna put, like, you're gonna buy something big or go on a big vacation and put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, it should be what? It should be important. Right? It's something that you're gonna have for a while, right? So if you're doing a big project at work, and you're gonna put your blood, sweat, and tears into it. You should know you're putting your blood, sweat, and tears into it. You don't wanna put your blood, sweat, and tears into Tuesday. Every Tuesday, right? Or every week, every day. You don't do that. You can't, it's unsustainable. You know it's unsustainable. But still, people do it. Because they have. Usually in our society, what do we have that makes us have to spend more money than we earn? Debt, right? You have debt. You, you, some of us have mortgages, college debt, credit card debt. There's a whole list of how many different kinds of debt we can have. And that's just money that we have to spend that we would like to spend out of our cheek, but sometimes we have to put our blood, sweat, and tears into paying our everyday bills. Right? If you have a couple hundred dollar college tuition debt, or God forbid you have hospital visit debt, or whatever, you can work really hard and you're filling all these holes. And you're not saving for your retirement and you didn't have an inheritance to, to lean on, or you did and you cash it out. Does that make sense financially? Mm -hmm. And so this is where I like to, because if you keep taking it back to money, people have a very day-to-day -day experience with money. Like we, we all know what it's like to spend money. Now, <clears throat> we talked about not paying for dinner out of your retirement account. Should you buy a house out of your retirement account? Maybe. Maybe. If you don't have to, you, don't, you shouldn't, but maybe. Why would you? Because it's a long-term investment. It's a long-term investment. It's a big deal. You'll have it for a long time. Exactly. It's, worth it. it's an investment. And when you do get retired, you still have that. You still have it. It's an investment. Do you spend your retirement on a, a blowout vacation? No. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. <laughs> people do. Yeah. Right? People do. They do it. And what happens is when we do it with our money, our body gets the message on how to use our resources. Right? So if we're like willing to dip into our day-to-day Checking to pay our, our dinner, but not our retirement, then your body just shuts down. It's like, I'm not going to work. Watch this. I'm going to get a fever. You'll have a reason not to go to work. Right? Does that make sense? Right? You like wouldn't go to work with a fever, would you? Some people are like, ah, think about it. <laughs> Sorry. If you have to do that, I apologize. Right? So sometimes your body's like, oh, I know. I got this message. I'm not going to spend my retirement to, to go to work. We're not doing that. It's just not a reason that I care about. But... If you have a child and your child is sick, would you empty your retirement for your child? No. Or even to have a child? And like not sleep at night and work extra and give them everything they have? No. You do. And we give our, our, our resources to our children. It's totally natural. So this is why in medicine we say having children is an investment or an expenditure of your essences. It's very precious, very deep to have a child. It takes a lot of resources to have a child. And we know it takes a lot of financial resources to have a child in today's society. Like, you need a lot of money to feed and house and shelter and then not work or lose work or daycare or whatever. A lot of resources to have a child. So in medicine we say it takes a lot of essences. So this is why we see people uh, before they get pregnant, you want to build up their chi and blood and their essences so they have as much as possible. But we can't build up their inheritance. You don't touch that. You just have to manage that. We could build up their retirement, like their retirement account. You know, really good financial marketing, financial planning strategies. You can build a retirement for yourself. You can't build an inheritance for yourself, but you can build a really good retirement. And it comes from working hard, saving, and having extra to save. Right? If your bills are too high and you and you buy too many things, you don't have money to save. Same thing in your body. If you live too hard, if you work too hard, if you party too hard, if you get sick and you fight through it, you don't have the resources to save for your retirement. And that's why people get really sick in their, sometimes in their 30s, but often in their 60s and 70s. If they even make it that long, they, they burn out, they spend too much. You go into, you go into debt, and then you, you have a negative cash flow, as George Carlin said, a negative cash flow position, and you have a big problem. You have a big problem. You're borrowing from people, and you don't have the money to get through. And the same thing in your health, right? If you go bankrupt, we'll call it like death, but most people don't, 
they, they go to like chapter 11 bankruptcy, so they have like bankruptcy in certain ways and they can still work and everything's messy after that. They can't get loans, they can't get money. Like that happens for people financially. You, you survive a financial fallout, but then life is very difficult after that. Same thing happens physically. You might survive a big thing, but it's not gonna be the same after that. And you're gonna be like, I'm working so hard and I'm trying to save all this money, but I have no money to save. Why well, don't I have any money to save? Same thing in your body. You could be exercising and dieting really well, but you have this big debt to your body and to your, your health that you have to pay off. Does that make sense? So the idea here is, and the reason I'm sharing this is I want you to pay attention to how you use your resources. I want you to pay attention to how you use your resources energetically. Are you doing your, let's say, let's say chi is, is supplemented and developed by uh, eating well and resting and exercising and things like that, but on like a, one day to the next. So like if you miss a good meal or you miss a good night's sleep, it's not a big deal. Blood is built by eating well regularly, exercising regularly, resting regularly. Right? So same thing like your, your short-term savings. You put money in it every week or every month if you want to build it. Right? You take a little out one day, you put it back the next day, not a big deal, but it's, it's over the long term. And your essences are really precious. This is something that you're constantly contributing to because you, you're going to need it in the future to survive the long term. So this would be like, on a day-to-day -day basis, is G day-to-day, week-to-week, year-to-year. Right? Or like decade-to-decade. So if you had like really hard 20s and 30s, it's like, just like we did in the four seasons, right? If you had a tough spring, you're going to pay for it in the summer. If you had a tough winter, you're going to pay for it in the spring. Right? So if you have a tough decade, you might get through. But then the next one, you better really work on chi and blood and building into those postnatal essences so that you don't collapse because you want to get to the fall or the winter of your life. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's a lot to process. And this is, this is why I'm sharing it is because caring for your health and optimizing your health is about how we use these resources appropriately. And just like this, there are some things you can't change. You can't change with what you're born with. You got what you got. So you're already past that. So don't grab about it. Just, if you have a good inheritance or even a little one, preserve it. Take care of it, nurture it. That's the thing that your parents are giving you or your family is giving you. Honor that. And if you don't have that, plenty of people live just fine without it. And you can get through. Just really pay attention to how you're using these resources. And if you feel like you're putting yourself into health debt to finance your day-to-day -day life, really honor that you're going to need a strategy to get out of that. Because that's not going to end itself. So that I preserve myself, my chi, blood, my essences, through the seasons of the year, and we can even say through the seasons of your life. Right? So based on where you are, you might have different opportunities to recover essences. Right? So if you're in the springtime of your life, you're, let's say you're in your early 30s and younger, you got 30 working years ahead of you to save that retirement. So if you put money into your business now, it's okay. You, you'll likely make it back by the time you hit that retirement age. If you're in your 50s and your 60s, you're in a different phase. You don't have the same work horizon. If you're in your 70s, you're in a very different phase, right? At that point, you want to be in the autumn, harvesting all of the seeds and the flowers that you got to celebrate putting in in the spring and the summer, and now you're harvesting the fruits of that so that when you get to winter, you have stored resources, right? Because you, you don't have the same young. Does that make sense? Yeah. Excellent. So... Uh, the last thing I'll leave you with is if you're in a phase where you feel like you're in an unsustainable use of your resources, honor that and just have a strategy to get out of it. Right? Say, I can do this for as long as I need to. Maybe it's going to be a year or two. During the time, I'm not going to make it any harder for myself than it needs to be. I'm going to preserve my chi, preserve my blood, and get support from those around me. But know that I need to have a strategy out so that I start banking essences. The essences are what get us to those big things in life. Big, big moments. Right? Help you navigate that, and you need them. They're precious. They're really important. And our, unfortunately, the way that we are, are programmed now is to just keep going, keep doing. Put your blood, sweat, and tears into everything. Who cares if you have the chi to do it? Do it. Dig deep. Right? Remember that phrase? Dig deep. And that's it. It's like, dig into your essences to do it. Cool. <laughs> 
Yeah, so one of the things I didn't talk about was with the Achieve Love and Essence is these three bank accounts, like, they're all in the same bank, though. Wait, they're all in you, so. Michael, did you start? I was doing a bonus, oh. fit, you know, a little behind the scenes, uh, extra thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of these Achieve Blood Essence is they're, they're, three, they're three bank accounts, but in the same bank. So if you don't have the money to pay for something in your checking, then it automatically draws from your short-term savings. And if you don't have to pay for something in your short-term savings, it automatically draws from the, the deeper savings accounts. And what happens is you just keep pulling, you keep pulling, you keep pulling, and before you know it, you're like, oh no, not only is my day-to-day -day checking account empty, but somehow I've spent through my retirement account. Mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of what happens with us is if we, if we look at Chi as like the day-to-day -day how I feel like. How did I feel today? How did I sleep last night? How did I eat yesterday or today? That's Chi. If you have a bad day, it's usually not the end of the world, and you can probably recover within a day or two. On the level of blood, it's like after a week of not eating well and not sleeping well, you start to show its effect. Now you're, now you're like pulling into the blood level. Right? So it's like a deeper level of fatigue, a deeper level of resource. Does that make sense? Right? So like, you basically stay up all night, one night, it's no problem. But if you did that three nights in a row, it's a different level of fatigue, it's a different level of resource. And if you did that for a year where you're like not sleeping well, not eating well, not exercising, all that stuff, you really start to take from the deeper resources to get through every day. And you actually start to move less, you get tighter, you get stiffer, everything starts to dry up a little bit. And so this idea of, of fluidity, of free flow, becomes less and less a part of your life the longer you go on, the deeper of the bank account you go into. Okay. And that's one of the ironies too is like, in Chinese medicine we talk about these different kinds of chi, we have wei chi, ying chi, zong chi, like all these different chi's, yuan chi, it's really all chi. So it's, it's like if it's your money, it's, it's all your money, it's just you put in these different accounts to, to track it so you can make sure that you're, you're paying the bills from the right places, but for the most part, it's just all money. And the same thing with chi, it's all chi. And it can go either way. And so if you have extra in your day to day and you're like, oh you know what, I didn't overdo it today in the bank. I didn't overdo it today in the bank. I didn't overdo it today in the bank. Same thing, it's like, if you didn't go out to lunch every day and you save that 10 bucks, oh, now you have $70 a week that you didn't spend. Oh, put that in the bank, put that in the bank, put that in the bank. And all of a sudden, how did I save all this money? Well, you just didn't overdo it. Does, that make, does that make sense? That makes a lot yeah. of sense. And so that's how the chi and the blood and the essences work. And if you do that long enough, you start to bank essences, which we all do regularly, but like you can really deepen your, your postnatal essences through your saving and conserv conservation of chi and blood in appropriate use. That doesn't mean to not do anything, mm -hmm. right? So like, if you don't use your chi, you don't use your blood, it doesn't accumulate, it actually stagnates. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean you have more of it, it's stuck. It starts to clog the pipes. So a Chinese medicine perspective is, you keep moving, you keep doing, you don't overdo, you don't overmove, you do the right amount in the right season, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, oh, I feel great yeah. all the time, right? And then, because what you're doing is you're starting to bank essences. Okay. But cool. everything just is more so um, from a physical aspect is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. On a physical, you can also look at it emotionally or psycho, psycho emotionally, right? So, you know, did I have a good emotional day? It's like a little bit chi, and mm -hmm. did I did I have a tough week? Mm -hmm. Am I having a tough year or life? You know, yeah, okay. yeah we can look at that. But because psychology and 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 biology and Chinese medicine are intertwined, mm -hmm. we don't separate them. We look at it a little bit differently. I don't want to oversimplify it. But in the next in the next workshop, in the next module, we're going to talk about uh, five elements and five emotions, okay. and that will really drive in some of the psychology stuff for us.